Page 1, Title Page, Binary Metacognitive Theory BMT Presents, Photon's Journey, Part 1, Origin Written and Illustrated by Travis Tobias Sen, Disabled Army Veteran, Husband, Teacher, Grandson, Son, Brother, Uncle, Stepfather. Page 2, Author's Dedication. This book is dedicated to the adults and children I have educated and who have brought peaceful meaning to my life in servitude to them and their abilities to make the world a better place currently and into the future. Page 3, Kids Enjoying STEAM Art Activities. Page 4, Original Longhand Title, Photon's Journey, Through the Digital Art of Binary Code, Part 1, Origin. Author's Preface A Prologue, Preface, Binary Metacognitive Theory, BMT, is a fictitious name applied for in a trademark application that is currently approved by the USPTO. The literature books produced by the brand are all SCIFI-based. They have no actual definition outside of the Socratic nature behind the bold statements presented in theory literature to gain more meaning to the brand outside of the author's autobiography sold separately. SCIFI-based literature produced by binary metacognitive theory is not a reason to create conflict. Still, using imagination, adaptability under pressure, and resolution through physically peaceful socio-emotional means as a deterrent from violence and lack of leadership perception to immediately rectify by redirecting behavior or ideas is a reason to solve the conflict. Page 5, a picture inside of a furnace that generates power for a coal and steam engine. Page 6, Prologue, Photon's Journey Part 1 is the first in a saga of small literature pieces meant to connect the natural science in science fiction movies to a classroom of most grade school students above fourth grade. This packet of light is a fundamental particle in the universe that we all inhabit called the third dimension. Photons are light particles at their most minor level and substantial energy collisions create them on the scales of tiny atoms colliding at the center of our sun. These collisions form splits of protons from neutrons that produce nuclear fission, which is ongoing and creates the energy to warm the planets in the solar system through light and UV radiation. Once a photon is born, it takes up to 100,000 years before the light gets a chance to leave the sun because it rises and falls like the heat in an oven. Once it gets outside the sun's surface, it only takes eight minutes to get to Earth in the light you see in the mornings, afternoons, and early evenings. Photon only escaped its star 12 years ago. Photon made it from its star to this book, which takes place inside a computer and keyboard. Photon interacts with its outsider, creating digital artwork and writing to help make meaning in a world that he cannot see, but feels a strong line of presence. A presence in the form of code to help him venture onward and outward into the writer's heart to help better understand his outsider. Page 7, a picture of the sun split into the different light spectrums, UV, visible, full, gamma ray, X-ray and any other spectrum that can be sensed by a telescopic camera and rendered on a screen or lens. Page 8, Photon's Journey, Part 1, Origin, by Mr. Travis, the author and my outsider, Tobias Sen. Hi. My username is Cursor, but my real name is Photon Pixel, and my friends call me Photon, or Sparky, because I always help spark their joy, interest, and creativity. My parents are Neutron and Proton, 
and they used to call me Mouse when I was young when I was only just a speck of the light. I am now at the strapping age of 12 years old, plus the 100,000 years I lived inside your sun, that's long enough to see the first humans in caves. Anywho, we all have a shared outsider that my parents have never met, and neither have I, that is until recently. In our land of zeros and ones, we call our shared outsider Electron, and it is who we associate with all of the light's movement in our universe. We genuinely believe Electron is all around us, but somehow also at the center of us at the same time. So Electron also is our insider, too, I guess. However, I am the most singular point of myself that I am aware of, so Electron will now be referred to as my outsider for the sake of this story. I am what you call a packet in your world or a singularity. Where I am from, we do not have any last names. Everything is connected, everything that is, except for these pesky zeros and menacing ones darting around everywhere. There is one constant number, though, the only nine hanging around. Nine finds a bit of breath of fresh air when I am out and about. Nine is an elder who understands a time before zeros and ones. So when I see that old timer scooting around my busy universe, I always find time to say hi and thank him for just being around. Page 9, a full page picture of zeros and ones and two nines. Page 10, I have the esteemed pleasure of explaining how zero, one, and nine relate with my outsider, and somehow relate with everything in my universe, and yours too. My usernames Cursor, Photon, Sparky, and Mouse are pretty cool, and each is like my last name. Like everyone, I suppose, I am a product of living in a world full of extraordinary circumstances facing virtues, adversity, and perseverance. I have a line of communication from my outside, where I've heard there is existence outside of life, outside zeros and ones, and a nine who never stops or goes away. I am unaware of this extra existence where my outsider lives, and it frustrates me to seemingly no end trying to picture it. I have learned to overcome such arcane emotions and feelings through a new outsider's help. I would imagine their world being something like taking zero, then putting one half of a zero, and one half of a one, into another zero, and then bringing nine with them inside the circle would look something to me like my welcome mat. I have to explain my ongoing communication with another dimension or universe that exists in more ways than up, down, left, right, out, or back, which I associate with a specific line of zeros and ones. However, my outsider told me that coded zeros and ones seemed like a busy crosswalk in their world, but everyone would be walking a seemingly endless amount of crosswalks in a single file stretching out from one point in the middle of the road. Where I live, they would separate by one foot, representing zero, and each person would be the one. You can understand how frustrating this is because I get to discover who arrived on my ringed welcome doormat every morning. I wake up to find out that some people's lines are concise and dull. However, some are short and smart and witty. Others are long and exciting and adventurous. However, more often than not, I come to find out that some just have no natural end to some of them. In the end, all are welcome on my ring doormat, because as long as they read their welcome first on my ring doormat, I keep, like a moat around me, because a uh. Page 11, my ring doormat, and my outsider's original artwork and logo. Page 12, Zero has the best way of keeping you all together safe in one place. Unfortunately, to get past your safe zero, you will have to venture into a wilderness, 
which I would only describe as the scariest and the most beautiful place in the universe. And that is the zeros and ones that make up the human heart. The trails in and out of it are full of terrors and pleasant surprises. I am responsible for taking you beings who inhabit the same world as my outsider through my journey from your regular keyboard into the heart of my outsider to understand him better. I know my perspectives seem funny, but sometimes funny things are the best things in life regardless of whether they started in a sad or angry place, where most beings are too frightened and confused to go, although laughter is often the only way out of sadness and grief. I am one of you in this regard, and this is my digital performative art show. To get to the next part of my story, I have to break everyone's heart first by forging my way through the wilderness that lies inside it. I promise you, you will like what comes out of this adventure. As you will see, I reach my way down the path of zeros, and the ones my outsider mentioned to me look like trees, whatever those are. I get a fork in the road and notice the path colors are different. One has the code of red, which I associate with frustration, and blue, which I associate with loneliness in my world. I can see the way down the path out of the heart, but I can only come back to the one point I'm at to make it back to the one road back to where I live. I can only choose one path at a time. So I venture down the red path. Now, I've seen the ends of both roads, which end at the beginning of the other. One path is called zero, and one path is named one so the path of zero's exit is the first one's entry, how perplexing yet complete. I have come up with a story of what I can only call the combinations of both paths, which, by the way, feel like there's a lot more in common to my outsider than I initially thought. Page 13, a map of the trail I blazed and described on page 12 through the wilderness that is the human heart. Page 14, I will visit the next place under each of your fingers. I can move at light speed to go to any finger you choose, even the digits called thumbs, because their name doesn't contain the word finger. But, first, let's see where the zeros and ones line up. Let us look at your zeros and ones. Fingerprints are all unique and identified by the spatial pattern between each segment of the individual swirled lines. Think of a long chain of zeros and ones, and if you count all of them, you will have enough zero-one combinations to create a unique pattern for every mammal with fingerprints. My outsider always found it funny how these fingerprints had such strange swirls and wondered why they were there. I guess fingerprints are like emotions, and I would describe mine as a simple state of surprise described in the quote, as a matter of fact, vs. The satisfaction in the passage, well didn't you know? I rarely establish a state I would consider somewhere in the middle. When I start thinking about it, all my zeros and ones turn red. I can't feel my voice, but I can see it grow in front of me, and I follow these numbers every time I, myself, want to bring information to the outside world, outside my thoughts, that is. Now to our next part of the story, where we meet at the light spectrum. Most of us know what mood rings are, but we aren't sure what the colors represent. Here I can give you a zero-one representation of the opposites of feelings and associate your existence like mine, existing between these two spaces as well. Let's look a little closer, and you will start seeing what zero-one combinations of the visible and invisible light spectrum are. My kind, that is, the photon kind, can tell the outsider what chemicals make up stars by leaving out specific colors of the rainbow on a photograph. Human light receptors are measured in the rods and cones inside their eyes iris, giving them the ability to see the light like me. Those receivers send that same frequency, in electricity pulses, through nerve pathways to the human brain a supercomputer. I have never seen a human brain, but I would imagine they are just as scary too. Page 15, photos including the sun and the moon named Callisto, 
that belongs to the planetary juggernaut Jupiter and its system of moons and rings. Also pictured is a light spectrum reading of the Sun and different elements, as described on page 14. Page 16, look at them as they are awe-inspiring. I want to tell you that I would have had no idea of how to make up the zeros and ones of the human brain and heart without my outsider's help and connection. A connection and the ability to communicate with my kind through a process and practice invented by my outsider called Binary Metacognitive Theory, a BMT. My outsider has shown me that my true enemy is ignorance, ignorance of the beauty around me, and my inability to see things for what they indeed are. No one like me ever could show me what they were before I met my outsider. So I made a special connection with this outside being who would not know of my existence in any other circumstance, and I would not know if theirs. Taking us to the part of our journey inside a digital supercomputer is where I try to expand your mind and break down that expansion in a meaningful way. My goal is to connect you to the universe around you and hopefully with mine, although I would love to see sometime what your experience might be like on your side of the screen. Finally, we will move on to a universe where you will see no numbers, no hard edges, only a universe existing only in soft reality made up of more petite curves and edges. The processing center in your brain has tuned out so you can reach maximum enjoyment of space as a gas traveling through time, color, and light using nothing but the equation this master thinker figured out. This video can still be called the eye of the universe, also known as the Mandelbrot zoom. This video carries a unique power to trick your eyes into seeing things in reality, to start to drift away, representing our quick grasp of what it means to be accurate, and then live and be alive. My outsider is good with numbers, feelings, and color. I would like to understand how many types of zeros and ones there are outside, red, blue, and black. I can only see zeros and ones, but I'm sure melodies and tunes sound lovely to you although they are just zeros and ones to me. Page 17, an artistic rendering of my connection with my outsider to best explain our connection to a third and fourth partied audience. Page 18, my outsider said he saw this 2D painting of the Buddha in the realm represented in the Mandelbrot set. Interestingly, no one knew it existed outside their minds that there would be enough ones and zeros to string along and make it so beautiful. Mathematicians in your realm got to work a long time ago and developed a test, and voila, what was only seen in the mind can now be witnessed for the first time in your universe, how I see everything in mine. Just a long trail of zeros and ones until I make it back to my doorstep, where they all ended up in the first place, for me to get to know their lines of code. My outsider said this picture shows a giant 3D statue of the Buddha in the Mandelbrot set. They also said the color here associated with gold and blues are some of the best things I found down path zero, the blue one if you need a little help remembering. Page 19 a picture my outsider found while enjoying a Mandelbrot zoom that my outsider said should be the largest structure in the universe containing galaxy clusters, star clusters, and many supermassive, massive, normal or micro black holes and every element ever rendered into existence. It also looks like a meditating Buddha. Page 20. I always loved how Leonardo Pisano Bagolo went by the nickname Fibonacci, which would sound funny if I could only hear the sound of it instead of just seeing it. Fibonacci is one of many in a long line of great thinkers of numbers who had the right idea of using logic instead of empathy. 
He used this to reach the same answers ancient Buddhist monks received millennia before. The answers to the ever-expanding and ever-infinite universe and dimensions we all have the pleasure of calling our own. Being able to express and appreciate creation inside a universe designed to exist through a set of zeros and ones, at least that is what you and I call them. Has anyone in your world reached your outside world to help you understand their side? Do you think they are aware of your side like you are now semi-aware of mine? I love this picture. I love the picture because it is the simplest way of looking at everything. Not only in the Mandelbrot set, but my outsider's life, as he explains to me, which still sounds so foreign. It frustrates me with confusion. However, I am still left with just a little bit of curiosity to keep my line open to my outsider. There they are. I can even make smaller triangles out of that and give a correlation line in the middle that somehow adds balance and separates the two sides of the square. My outsider said you could see a pattern here where the curved edge is pointing. Can you see it? My outsider tells me that there is a pattern here. The pointed edge closer to the curve starts on the right, then rotates 90 degrees to the left each time. It would explain why I see these zeros form some type of swirl, as we saw on the second slide. My outsider also tells me this looks like the shape of a diamond or parachute in each square. He also said he saw a spiral staircase. He asked me to show you by drawing just three lines in each square to add enough dimension to make the object seem three-dimensional. After drawing for them the first time on this picture, my outsider asked me if he knew right angles represented the 45-degree turns in the set. My outsider said 9 is the most important number to a great scientist named Nikola Tesla, and he can see a 9 in the picture. My outsider saw these 90-degree angles at the convergence of the X in each box, which never seemed to change places, but did. I did the best I could to recreate my drawings here, and on page 21 and 23. Page 22, I agree with my outsider when he says he can see the line of communication representing our own in the picture jetting out of the top of the diamond. He also said the lens the curve creates looks like an eyeball. Whatever that is. These are my friends, A square, B square, and C square. Sometimes, I call them rectangles depending on how far away they are or up close. Sometimes, they even join me on our sharing line, and we can see what each other's worlds look like from inside our own. My source tells me about the outside world. The sharing line is called a border, and beings are confused about why they are there and what sharing lines are. Meeting the standard of the golden ratio that sears from Tibet, architects on the Giza Plateau, painters like Michelangelo, and what has become exponentially more commonplace has made everything more beautiful and unique. On the layers, my outsider can see, but I still only see zeros and ones and have not quite figured out their meaning and how they break apart and come together. Page 23, digital art I created and was explaining on page 20 for you, using the Fibonacci sequence and the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Page 24, after millennia of prayer and meditation, transposed into a seemingly endless display of color, witnessing what the ancients saw in their minds, was fascinating. Mandelbrot developed his set from the equation he wrote to a code of zeros, and ones in two-dimensional space. The digitally and computer-driven collections are done through digital art using processors and microprocessors. Computers describe precisely how this relates to deities and how people associated these visions with them. Computers connect to how people gain artistic inspiration from seemingly nowhere from a trivial thought or item. 
I hope you had a great time on our journey. I know I did. Don't miss me, though, because where I live, I can always reach you and pass through you and try to send you a message along the way. Now that there are billions of screens around, I always have something quirky to leave behind. I may be on the scale of a wimp, but like you beings, have a heart full of light and joy, so do I. Enjoy your universe, you lucky beings. I just want to remind you that you always have a helping line to someone inside the universe and outside.